Hi, welcome to Chapter 3, Part 2. In this video, I'm going to talk about some very basic definitions that we need for the rest of Chapter 3, and indeed the rest of the course. I'm going to talk about the definition of volume flow rate, represented by the symbol Q, and the definition of mass flow rate, represented by the symbol M dot. I'm going to start with a very simple case. We talked about this approximation in the previous video. I'm going to start with one-dimensional flow. And this is the approximation we're probably going to make in, well indeed, we're going to make in, in most of the calculations in this course. And then I'm going to talk about the general integral representations for a general three-dimensional velocity field. Uh, and we need these definitions of Q and M dot for some upcoming uh, theoretical derivations that are in chapter 3. So let's start with the volume flow rate. And here I'm going to consider a uh, one-dimensional flow in a pipe. We've talked about this approximation in the previous video. In the one-dimensional approximation, we uh, represent the flow in the pipe by a single velocity, V, that's equal to the average velocity. And what we're considering is the amount of flow that crosses a control surface, and I'm representing the control surface by Cs. Now, in an incremental or in a uh, differential amount of time dt, the differential volume that will pass across the control surface will be a cylinder of fluid that I've shown on the right-hand side on the bottom. So the velocity everywhere in this cylinder is equal to V, and the cross-sectional area of this cylinder is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe, which in this case I've shown as round, but it, not, it doesn't have to be round. Now in differential time dt, the fluid moves a distance dx, which is simply equal to the velocity times the differential time. So the volume of this uh, cylinder of fluid here is just the cross-sectional area times the, if you like, the extruded distance dx, which is v dt. I should point out that I'm using the symbol v with a line through it for volume just to distinguish clearly uh, volume from velocity. So the volume flow rate across that control surface is the rate of change of volume per unit time, and I've made the substitution here for dv. I'm making this substitution in for the differential volume, and you get q equals a v dt over dt. The dt's cancel, and we just end up with that the volume flow rate is just the velocity times the cross-sectional area. This is the equation we're going to be using for one-dimensional flows. It has units of cubic meters per second in the metric system, or cubic feet per second in the British system. Now that we have volume flow rate, we can very easily calculate the mass flow rate. The mass flow rate can be expressed as m dot equals mass per unit volume times volume per unit time. And you'll see here that the in this expression the volumes cancel and we just end up with the mass flow rate per unit time which is what we're after. Now the term on the left hand side here mass per unit volume is the fluid density rho and volume per unit time here is the volume flow rate that we derived the expression for in the previous slide. So m dot is just rho times q, where q equals v times a. Again, this is for one-dimensional flows, and the mass flow rate has units of kilograms per second or slugs per second in the British system. We'll be using both of these equations, both the q equals va and m dot equals rho va extensively in this course, but you should keep in mind that these equations apply only for one-dimensional flow where the mean velocity is normal to the control surface. So now we move on to the general integral definitions for volume flow rate and mass flow rate. And 
these definitions are for a general three-dimensional uh, vector velocity field. And in this case, I'm considering an arbitrary control surface, CS, down here. So we look at the, the figure. This is actually figure 3.1, I think, from your textbook. What we're considering is a vector field, V, passing through this arbitrary control surface, and N is the outward pointing normal at that little small area dA, and theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the outward pointing normal to the surface. And over on the far right hand side we see this uh, little area dA enlarged with the outward pointing normal, the angle theta, and the velocity vector over that uh, area dA. So now to get the volume flow rate we need to integrate the local velocity over the surface area of the control volume but it's not just the velocity we need to calculate the normal component of the velocity at each point so at each little dA and to do that we take the dot product so we take the integral over the control surface of v dot n, the outward pointing unit normal, dA, and that gives you the total volume flow rate leaving the, uh, the volume. Recall that the dot or scalar product gives you the component of velocity normal to the control surface, where from, I think you'll have got this in high school, v dot n is the absolute value of the velocity vector v times the absolute value of the uh, unit normal which has a value of 1, a length of 1 times cos theta. So that gives you the normal component at each point which you can then integrate to get the total volume flow rate. We're going to use this concept in uh, subsequent derivations in the course. So now it's relatively easy to get the, the mass flow rate in the same way. We take in the same way we did for the uh, one-dimensional flow, we take uh, for the three-dimensional flow, we take the volume flow rate times the density. But in this case, for a general three-dimensional flow, we take the local flow rate at the surface times the local density. So we integrate over the control surface. This is the, the local uh, volume flow rate, V dot N dA, right? It'd be the local volume flow rate times the local density row. Note that n is the outward pointing normal. So v dot n is positive when you have outward flow and v dotted into the unit normal vector is negative for inward flow. So m dot is going to be the net uh, mass flow rate leaving the control volume. In other words, if m is positive you have flow leaving the control volume. If m dot is negative then flow is entering. And of course, both of these expressions, when you uh, simplify them for one dimensional flow, you recover what we had previously. You get that Q equals VA and M dot equals rho times Q, which is rho VA. I thought I'd end with a very simple example just to illustrate this. This is a very important concept. Simple but very important. Consider uh, liquid water flowing at 68 degrees F and in into a circular tank with an inside diameter of three and a half feet. If the water level in the tank is rising at 10 inches per second, we want to calculate the mass and volume flow rate of water flowing into the tank. Very simple example. Uh, and if you think about it for a moment, this kind of uh, flow is really well represented by a one-dimensional approximation. If you're filling the, the sink in your kitchen, for example, uh, the velocity of the rising water level is very uniform across, across the, uh, the surface of the water. So we can use our one-dimensional approximations, Q equals VA. V is that 10 inches per second, the rising liquid water level over here. Of course, we need to convert that into feet per second, so I've, I've divided by 12. So 10 divided by 12 feet per second, and then times the cross-sectional area of the circular tank. Uh, 
the diameter is three and a half feet, so it's pi three and a half squared upon four, and we get a volume flow rate of just over eight cubic feet uh, per second. Now for water at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, I've looked up the properties. We have to do a little conversion to uh, British gravitational system. In metric system, the density of water is 998 kilograms per cubic meter, and then I've taken the conversion factors from Appendix C of your textbook. There's 0.3048 uh, meters per foot. You've got to cube that, and one kilogram, or sorry, one slug equals 14.594 kilograms, and that gives the density of water of 1.936 slugs per cubic foot. So now we can multiply the density of water times the volume flow rate uh, to get the mass flow rate. So that's just simply 1.936 slugs per cubic foot times our previously calculated volume flow rate of just over 8 uh, cubic feet per second. And if you check the units here, the cubic feet cancel, and we get slugs per second. So the answer is about 15 and a half uh, slugs per second. Very simple example. Make sure you understand this. It's going to come up over and over and over in this uh, the remainder of the course. Sorry for the bad pun.